Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 69. So today I want to show you a tutorial for an anklet that's pretty simple and really cute, and you'll be able to put it together in a jiffy and be able to wear it with your shorts and skirts right away. So let's get started. So these are the tools and materials you'll need for this project. You're going to need beads and we're making a three strand anklet. So I'm using three different kinds of beads and you can do this however you like. You could use all one color, one type of bead. I'm going to do a variety. So I have three different colors and you're going to need chain. And I just went to, I have a collection of kind of odds and ends of chain and I just found pieces that would be long enough for my anklets. So Part of the anklet will be beads, and the rest of it will be chain. So I just found three pieces of chain that would be long enough for that. You will need a few jump rings. I'm using 7mm jump rings. You can use whatever jump rings you like. 4mm will be fine. Just make sure they're sturdy, These because anklets tend to get a lot more wear than other types of jewelry. And then I'm using a lobster clasp and 20 gauge half hard round wire. And then for tools, you will need your wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and bent nose pliers. So to get started, we are going to be making basically a wire wrapped bead link, which I've shown you before if you've watched my videos before, but we're going to be putting several beads on it. So in this case, these beads are small, so I am using several of them. The other strands of beads are a little bigger, so I'm just trying to keep them all about the same length for the bead portion of the anklet. So I'm going to show you just one strand, and then you can repeat it for the other two, and then we'll put it all together. So what you need to do is get your 20 gauge half hard or round wire, and you need about three inches longer than the beads you're using. And then you just cut the wire. Now I'm going to move this to the side for now. And then you need your round nose pliers. So you're going to hold your round nose pliers about an inch and a half from the top of the wire. And then you're going to wrap the wire around the pliers to form a loop. Now, this loop is off center. We want it to be centered kind of on top of this long wire. And this is how I center it. Hold the loop in your chain nose pliers. And then I wrap around one time with the shorter wire. And while I do that, I just pull this longer wire out straight. So now the loop is straight above the longer wire. And now, I'm just switching hands because it's easier for me because I'm right-handed. And we'll go around two additional times. I'm using bent nose pliers to do this. You could just use your hand, whatever feels more comfortable. And we'll just go around twice. So there are three wraps total. The first one we did to straighten out the wire and then two additional ones. And now we will just trim off the excess wire, making a flush cut. So that's the back of your wire cutters, most wire cutters, toward what you're cutting. And that will leave a flush cut on the piece you're working on. And then you just grab your chain nose pliers and make sure that end is not poking out. And I'm just kind of going around with my chain nose pliers. And it just kind of pushes that end down so it's not poking out. So now you just add your beads. 
so I have several. I'm just going to add them all. Kind of stack them up. Um, if your beads are larger, you might just be using three beads. You can use whatever beads you like. I actually think that's probably good. I'm going to add one more. I was just kind of comparing the length of this stack of beads to the other beads that I'm using. Once you add the beads, you're going to do the same thing you just did on the other side. On this side, it's just a slightly different because there's already beads on the wire. So I'm holding the wire in my round nose pliers again. I'm about a quarter of an inch from the top of the last bead. And again, I'm going to just wrap around forming a loop. And again, I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers. I'm going to wrap around once, and while I do that, pull the beads out straight. And switch hands and wrap around two more times. And again, I'm using my bent nose pliers to help me wrap. And I just wanted to mention. <laughs> We've got a thunderstorm rolling in, so if you hear some loud banging, it's it's thunder. <laughs> so I hope it's not too distracting. And then again, we're just going to trim off the excess wire, making a flush cut. And again, I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers and just making sure that end is not poking out. So that is one wire wrapped bead link. I'm going to do this for each of my three strands and then we'll put everything together. Okay, so I have my three bead links for the three different strands and I ended up mine aren't all exactly the same length and that's fine. I thought about making this one a little longer but then I kind of liked just how it was so I decided to just leave it as is. And so the next thing you need to figure out is how long do you want your anklet to be. So for each strand, if your bead lengths are different lengths, you're going to have to do some calculating for each one to make sure they're all the right length. But first you need to measure around your ankle, figure out where exactly you want your anklet to kind of lay on your ankle, and measure that and get a total length. And then you will need to, for each wire back wrapped bead link, see how long it is and subtract that from how long you need your anklet to be. Also, you'll want to take into account your clasp. I'm using a lobster clasp and that's what I suggest that you use for an anklet just because it will be more secure to stay on your ankle that way. So figure out how long you need your anklet to be and then measure out your chain and cut it. And then we're just going to cut it in half um, so that each side has chain coming from it. And um, it will come around and the, bead, the beads will be right in the middle. So I have measured my chain for each strand of my anklet. Each of my uh, wire wrapped bead lengths were different lengths, and my chain was actually different for each one too. So I just simply measured each one with my ruler, kind of set it down, and measured and had the length. And I'm just keeping the chain with each bead length that it goes with to avoid confusion. So now the chain, I think I mentioned, I want to attach two sides so the bead link will be in the middle so I'm just going to find the middle and cut it and you can just cut your chain with your wire cutters and so I'm just going to do that with each one. Now we're going to be attaching the chain to the wire wrapped bead link in the middle since I've split the chain and we're going to use a jump ring to do that so let me show you how to open a jump ring so you need two pair of pliers. I like to use bent nose and chain nose. Any two pair of pliers can work. 
just not round nose pliers and nothing that would have teeth on the inside. So bent nose and chain nose are great. So you just find the, the opening in the middle of your jump ring. You can just run your finger over if you can't see it very well. And then you line up your pliers on either side of that opening. So one on each side. And you do not want to make an opening out. We're going to be pulling one plier for, toward us, one back away from us. And so you're just kind of keeping that loop intact, but there's an opening so you can attach things. And so we're going to connect the chain and the bead link. And then we're just going to close, which you just do the same thing, but just kind of in reverse. And you want to go back and forth past the point of closing the jump ring a few times to kind of harden it. And you'll hear or feel it kind of snap into place. And so we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I did not do this, but typically it's easier to open all the jump rings that you need for a project at one time. So you don't have to keep putting your tools down and switching them. And close. So that's one, and we're going to repeat that for the other two as well. Okay, so I have my three strands, and I want them to all be attached to each other instead of separate anklets. So I have an open jump ring, and I am just going to attach all three. You know, the, the final link on the chain to one jump ring. And then I'm adding the clasp to the side. And closing it. And if you don't want to make three strands, you can, of course, just do one strand and have a really cute anklet. And on the other side, I am going to attach all three to one jump ring again. Just the last link in the chain for each strand I'm just putting in this jump ring. And I'm putting them in order so it's not twisted up. And then closing this jump ring. And then on this side I'm going to actually add a couple extra jump rings because we need something for the lobster clasp to hook into, and I'd like to have a couple extra links. If you find that you made your ink a little too short, you can adjust it this way by adding a couple extra jump rings. And then we have this cute anklet. And so that's all there is to it. So as I mentioned, there's another video that shows you my process of how I got to this. And that process is basically a condensed version of what I teach in Inspired eCourse. That class is my creativity, art journaling, jewelry making class. So I'll give you kind of creativity boosters and activities you'll make an art journal page and then I will show you how I go from art journal page to making kind of a map, pulling out the inspiration from the art journal page, sketching jewelry, and then creating your own unique pieces. Each week we go through that process. Each week I also have a jewelry project for you, but I expect that it will be inspirational and you will be designing your own jewelry. The project is there just kind of to help you and maybe teach you a couple things if you need it. So that class starts July 25th. It is four weeks plus an introduction. So on July 25th is the introduction week and then we'll be every week for four weeks after that. You can learn more and sign up at KimberlyKohler.com slash inspired and the link will be below this video. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.